let's see your thoughts. We've already just gone over the map choices. I'm sure you just heard. But this one's going to start out on Ghost Town. So I I feel like uh, just to, for formality's sake, I'm going to get this one out of the way. Master Pupil, favorite tank line to go down to start out? Oh, man, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, I'm a heavy player, so E5's got to be the the one for me. Um, I mean, I just love the line all around. The T29 was an amazing tier 7. T32 was an amazing tier 8. No concept. M103, eh. It was an all right tier 9, but I mean, it works. It okay. works. So, um, you know, American. E5's been viable ever since it was released, so I'd have to go with the E5. All right. American. Now, comps, on your side, what's your favorite um, tank line? It's got to be the Russian mediums. I mean, I'd say the 140 is probably the best tier 10 uh, tank in terms of overall play style. So I'd have to go with the uh, the Russian medium line. See, comps, comps understands it, ladies and gentlemen. He gets fun tanks. <laughs> All right, guys. Moving straight along, let's talk about this. Maps. Ghost Town, uh, comps. I talked to Wally yesterday. I asked him a few questions about your performance on Ghost Town and Himmelsdorf. We have Ghost Town to start this one off. This is y'all's map. How how do you guys go about dominating a map like this? How do you win at Ghost Town? What's the game at the just entry level for you guys? How to? I mean, it's practice. It's just the amount of reps we put in, uh, the knowledge um, of the map. Basically, it's the amount of time you put in. You reap these rewards uh, when it comes in terms of results at the end. So I'd say uh, just knowing the map overall, practicing a lot. Uh, that's how we're able to uh, dominate. No, the map. map, you can play it however you want, right? Yeah. All right. All right, Pupil. So, the last two times you guys have played Eclipse, or I've played Apex, excuse me, uh, you guys have come up short, the finals, and then earlier this season. What's going to be different today? Why do you think you guys have a chance of beating them? Well, I mean, if you look at our game from this season, I mean, it wasn't that far off. Like, uh, I mean, Ox won by... What, like 10, 15 seconds? It could have gone either way. It was so close. Um, so, I mean, it should be really interesting to see how we are now, considering both teams weren't at their, you know, their top ability or, you know, skill level. So, I mean, both both teams are starting to do really well in the season, so it should be a really fun clash to, you know, see how this works out. That, that's a hard one to answer to. It's like, yeah, hey, you guys didn't do so hot last time. What's, what's going to happen this time? Well, they can't give away their secret rocks. Comps is right here. Sight. He's on the comps. If he tells them the whole plan right now, it's all bust. So I'm sure Eclipse, Eclipse, tell me, you got something sneaky coming on. You guys have been practicing. You guys have been prepping. You guys have been studying uh, Apex, right? You guys had yeah, Wally we've on we've been your, practicing. Yeah, and you guys had Wally on your team a while back. Do you feel like having had him on your team, getting to see that kind of his mentality, his approach to things, is, might be an assistance or a little bit of a help to you today? I think it will, but I mean, with the fact that we have three people going to their team as well, um, I mean, it'll the knowledge goes back and forth. It's almost like playing, well, I wouldn't say the exact same team, but I mean, we've gone back and forth with this team for so long that I mean, it's, you know, neither one can get away with, uh, you know, an amount of, like a, a decent amount of strats that the other doesn't know. So, I mean, you guys are close. Be fun. You guys are close. Yeah. All right, guys. I think this is uh, this has been a good time. Thank you guys for answering our questions. We will see you on the battlefield, and uh, good luck, have fun. Okay, well, that's that's Apex, that's Eclipse. I felt like he was about to give something up, but it felt like Master People went, "Wait a sec, I, I can't talk too much about this." It's just, mm -hmm. Comps is right here. Yeah, how much would it really surprise him though? And what, what's going to stop Master People from going? Hey, we're going to you know go do this. And, He's not going to give something. away like the real strat. Well, exactly. But like, then go do but, like else. If, if he tips off a little bit too much, you know, Comps is going to be like, "Wait a tick, something's going on here," right? And Could be. I doubt yeah. it. But like, let's look back at those map picks one more time. Down below. Thank you so much. Um, let's start Ghost Town. Up under you over there. Ghost Town's the map that we expect this one to go the way of Apex. If that holds true, this is quickly in their favor. If not, well... Eh, well, let's put it this way. Let's, let's say Ghost Town is the 2-0 in favor of Apex. Yeah. If everything else outplays 1-1 across the board, by the time we get to Murrow, that's 5-3 to three in favor of Apex. That's still Apex getting the win. Yeah, and, and Ruinburg being a map where, yeah, you'll go 1-1. One one. Both teams Mura win. Vanka also very likely to 1-1. One one. Actually, here's another little fun fact for you guys. Yeah. Muravanka has actually become the most defensive map in the league. It's sitting around a 70% win rate for the defense. It actually has passed up Ruinburg, which is sitting at like a 65% right now. Okay. Well, we're just getting ready for everything to start 
in a moment. So just one moment before we get into it, I've made sure my camos and re- everything's all set up. So I'm set here. Rox, let's talk a little bit about uh, actually the fact that these guys are the top players in the league, the top fantasy picks as well. Apex and Eclipse make up the top seven players in the fantasy league. So that top seven is all Apex or Eclipse players. And like we heard in the interview, these guys have traded around teams so much, they might as well be almost the same team. It's just really hard to explain the relationship. A lot of the same players. Well, and here's another way to look at this, if you want to break it down this way. Yeah. Seven of the top seven players based on average fantasy points this season are from Eclipse or Apex. Uh, Then looking down at it, four of the top seven are from Eclipse or Apex and average damage. And nine out of the top 11 are from Eclipse or Apex and average kills. So all these players, top of a lot of the stats, you know, number one, number two team. These guys put up the number. And and what's a great point to make about that is notice the fact that Apex and Eclipse don't play the, don't tend to play longer series. And so you generally see more people rack up higher points in a longer series. You get a better chance to deal damage every round. You'll have less rounds where you're just going to be that one tank that got blown up immediately. Because there's always there's usually one or two guys who just go down first. It had sucks. But you lose out on a lot more points that way when it's a series of five battles than when it is of nine. Well, then that's why the stats I went over were the averages and not the totals. Yes, but your averages can be more consistent when you get a chance to actually play the more battles. Right, many, right. You see this evidenced with Aquatic M60s in the past, where their averages were still above everyone else because they had more results to throw into that. This and is fair, but that's more it, time. It, it kind of brings you a little bit closer to an equilibrium, yeah, mm-hmm. but it, it does also keep you from going incredibly low or, in, or incredibly stupid high on your averages. Yeah, but it, when you look at it, though, it can't really influence it that much. Okay, a few yeah. percentages here or there, but it's not going to be all of a sudden just because Aquatic M60s have played more matches that they have some astronomical number higher than the players of Apex. Yeah, but it does throw things off, especially because, what is it, we get maybe 50, 60 battles on average for for the league for both round robins together. Some teams will go about a 100, maybe 120 battles an entire season, but you're going to get around 60 60 battles in one season. And so with that many results, you actually have few enough that one or two really bad matches for one player can really hurt their stats. But then a few blowout matches are going to make them a superstar for life. But then there's also guys like Leadif who are superstars forever. Yeah, no, they always just keep putting up the points match day after match day. Um, now, one thing I will have to say is, you know, looking at Leadif, even though he's had some bad match days in there because he's had so many good ones, he's still sitting in the number one in total points, total damage done on the season. All right, guys, it is time for battle number one, so get ready for it. Here we go. Ghost Town. The first absolutely symmetrical map made especially for seven versus seven games. The teams start the battle on opposite sides. There are numerous ways to attack here. One of the bases is located in the central square, the other one at the top of the city. The hardest battles are usually fought for the top base, and this calls for the use of heavy tanks. Sometimes the teams choose fast tanks for spotting and base capturing. Take a look at these lineups, Rockstar. Break them down for me. Let's start with the clips. Eclipse, a 113, 350Bs, an E100, a Batchat, and a Udis. Apex coming in with a tier 9 lineup, actually. Two 50Bs, a Kronwagen, two Batchats, and two WZ-111s. All right, so what do you think with the WZ-111s? I like a strat like that. It's not as common as we'd like to think. Well, we have the two Batchats to be the eyes for Apex, to be the scouts out wide. Then you have the WZs to be the meat, the first tanks that lead the charge. And then you have the Kronwagen and the 50Bs to provide that support fire from just a little bit behind them. Where it looks like Eclipse are going to go with a little bit more direct route. They have that E100 and the 113. Uh, and then 350Bs. So I, I expect to see a very quick rotational strat from Eclipse. I don't expect them to sit back a lot early in this match. All right, so right out, straight into their face, aggression. We've got the common jump coming up here from Dark God Zim. We'll be sure to catch this real quick so you all can see how you can do that at home. And you just got to kind of skate yourself up. And right up top you are. And now you're up to the back of Ghost Town. And so with this, Eclipse is set up solid defense towards the north side and it's up to Apex how are they going to attack what's it look like they're going for right now Rox 
Doesn't look like they're setting up to attack, to be completely honest. It looks like they're setting up, waiting for some sort of rotation out of Eclipse. Like they're waiting for them to rotate through the 1-2 line or maybe get a, too aggressive over towards the 7 Would you call for them to trap? make their play. Would you call that a trap, maybe? Uh, not necessarily a trap, but waiting, uh, waiting a little bit early on and then making a second play, seeing if it comes through. I mean, Obviously, yes, it's a trap in the sense that if it comes in right now, they'll spring it. But I, I don't think they're, they're counting on this pain out in the long run. I think they're just making sure that they get their guns safe, they understand their game plan, that they start clearing different parts of the map. And then before they get too aggressive, they send tanks off where they can get picked off, they know exactly what they're walking into, just being very systematic. Oh, look at this. I found something interesting. The way Nitz was actually watching a corner was uh, quite interesting, I should say, in the sense that he was had his turret facing one direction to the to the right where it currently is. And then he actually just third person and zoomed in facing the opposite angle. He's actually checking angles that he would have POV. It's 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 not like he's breaking new ground or anything, but the style in which he moves around is something to appreciate. Uh, it's like one of those little like just you don't see everyone's replays where they look around quite as attentively as, as some other players and so I gotta give Nitz a little bit of uh, props for his, his situational awareness skills. And I like the setup from Eclipse. They have the Z100, the first tank here, in front, trying to bait in the tanks from Apex, just poke up and over spot. Now, it's a little bit risky in the Z100 being the flat armor um, and these WZs firing heat shells that could pretty much go through the superstructure of that E100 without too much effort, especially if he's not angling correctly. Yep. Shoot him right in the turret. But then, but then, you know, once they commit to try to kill him, they get in point blank, they get around if they want to make that push. Look at how many different lanes Eclipse can open up. They have these 50Bs on the outside. The 113 can head south very quickly. The UDES should have shots from the elevated position at A3 straight down that lane. So all their guns can essentially hit that area just behind Exo. Exactly. So it's all going to come down in the next seven minutes, I should say, to where this engagement happens and how the follow-up happens. If you remember, if you've watched some of the replays from Apex... Uh, on their previous battles in Ghost Town, I would be afraid to attack them. If you remember seeing those, the way they respond to any aggression, even the most tight, on-point, flawless attacks, will be countered out by Apex. So Eclipse knows this, right? They're, they're, they're just slowing it down. They know they don't need to get too aggressive too early, and their friend right now is the clock, burning down as much of the clock as they can and then making sure that they can get a couple resets and really, really fill that clock to the last couple of minutes where they don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, the thing is, is a lot of teams try that, but they don't set them up. They don't put themselves in a position to easily get those resets quickly or reliably. And what happens is the attacking team then sets up some crossfires. They set up some traps. They get one tank on cap. They make the defending team have to move to rotate where the rest of the guns are waiting and ready to start doing damage. Exactly. And here's another rotation coming out of Apex. They're going to head from the north where they just set back up, and they're heading south. So, from the south, I'm guessing maybe just trying to flex around and maybe catch one of the scouts from Eclipse out. It's it's curious to see what they're going for, but whatever it is, it'll have to pay off within how long, do you think? Do they have two minutes to to get an engagement or else there's probably a wash for them or, or what do you think? Apex need to start some sort of play towards winning this game within the next minute or so. They need to start either some cap pressure or they need to start some sort of, I don't want to say full engagement, but they need to start finding some damage on someone to start chipping away at this. Um, they wait too much longer and they'll, they'll run out of time because Eclipse will be they'll just be too quick. They'll rotate out too quickly. They'll get themselves safe. They'll know how to burn the clock down and they'll, they'll make Apex pay for, for wasting such valuable time. Fair enough. So, I don't think Apex is willing to waste any more time as I do see the initial points of their engagement. It's going to be external. Emperor Brett knocks Mathis in the autoloaders heading down the middle. On the flanks, Canadian Impact and Dodoma have moved out, and they are now spotted. Damage being done onto Tigers and T1 Diabetic. That's all from the autoloaders inside. External got Emperor. So that's support coming in from the middle. Batchats have gotten themselves a solid position and should be able to push up. But it looks like Eclipse is posturing, restructuring themselves to account for this attack. And I, I don't know, Rox, do you think it's going to work? Well, it looks like they're going to start backing their tanks out up across the north. And they're actually going to set up over towards the 6-7 line to where they can retake that 2-cap if they need to. Because right now, they're essentially letting Apex take this angle along the 3-line, which was the angle that Eclipse were originally relying on to get the resets onto that 2-cap. 
precisely. And, and it would have... Uh, oh, no. It looks like Tigers gets himself spotted out. Looks like a little damage might go into no... Nope. No click doesn't take any. And Eclipse have just shown their hand to Apex. And I wonder if there's something to this. Because if you... You know you're going to get spotted moving around on the north side. You have to, right? So maybe Eclipse has something at play here. They could be going for some kind of counter. Maybe a trap. Maybe a bait. But I don't know if it'll matter. Wallhacks and Nits are on cap. And there's 40 seconds left. And that will force an engagement against Eclipse. They don't have much long now until... Well, I actually, I really like this out of Eclipse. They've set up to counter out any bat chats out here on the 9-0. Surprise. And allow themselves to get the resets. Or, or at least get to the area where they can get the resets. And they're actually going to go for Canadian Impact. He's going to drop first. He goes down. But now there's nine seconds left to get a reset onto cap. Will they get it? Wallhacks... Sitting on plenty of cap points. Dodo, I love this. He's screening the cap. He's going to keep a number of tanks. Probably no click from getting close enough to get a reset. And he does. One second left. Zero. That's a cap out. That should be it. That should be. And wait for the 59 seconds marker at the top of the screen. And it looks like it will extend just a moment. We've got damage being dealt. And that's it. That's done. Right there. That's the cap out by Apex. They figured out their opponent's layout. They realized we could push up the west side. They pushed up. Eclipse gave ground, almost a little too easily, you could say. Well, and the thing to look at there was how Eclipse uh, made the rotations. They didn't really have a whole lot of intel when they made them. They kind of had a feeling where they were. They said, all right, yeah. it kind of feels like they're in the south, and they kind of shifted over towards the north. All right, they're probably over towards the north, so they set up for that north. And it was they were making the rotations based upon timings and only spotting one or two tanks. They weren't doing it on solid in info where they spotted a majority of the tanks. Yeah. And then the second where Apex saw them crossing the north, they knew how far away they were. They knew what lanes they had to come from. They knew where they had the control. And then they just put cap pressure on, and they, they knew at that point that they could funnel them back and that there was no easy reset for Eclipse. And that's basically all Apex had to do was just get the cap pressure on, and then they controlled the lanes once they knew our Eclipse order. Exactly, and then just screen it out. We saw Dodomo as one of those players who was just got in the way at the right time. Let's take a look actually at some of the replays from the last battle. Check out a little bit of that action. This is an example uh, of the point we were talking about when e Eclipse gave ground. I love that you brought up the fact that uh, they were countering out bat chats because that's exactly what Eclipse did. They found Canadian Impact. He was not able to make a nuisance of himself, for very long at least. And because of that, Eclipse were able to deal with that one problem. Unfortunately, like you noted, Apex knew what was up. Get on cap. I like that Dodo decided to screen. He realized I'm an important and dangerous enough opponent that you have to respect me to a certain degree. And I'm going to make it so you have trouble getting to the cap. I'm looking at the damage here. Ox Mathis putting up 2,600 damage in the Kronwagen. He has the most games this season in the Kronwagen out of anyone. Looking at it, Exo, though, 1,600. That's essentially two shots out of the 100, two shots that are high rolls. Uh, and then looking down the second page, the Udis not really able to get into the fight, and also Vetro only doing 451, one of the top fantasy players. Off to a slow start. He barely got a chance, I think, is most of it. Because the thing is, the way that Apex seemed to get on cap, it didn't seem like Eclipse was quite ready for that. It seemed like they weren't expecting that that was a possibility at that point in the battle. That or, that or the way that the attack came and the way everyone responded... I'd be willing to put a bet on the fact that this that something went wrong on Eclipse's side for battle number one. Not saying that Apex did anything less than perfect, but Eclipse possibly kicking themselves for the way they started off. Well, like it's not said, over I felt, yet. I felt like the rotations um, were based too much off a gut feeling and less so off solid info. Yeah, and that's a rough way to start this one. But it is Ghost Town, it is Apex's map, and we're about to get into battle number two. So let's go ahead and talk about that one. We've swapped sides. We're going to say, all right, this is the lineup. Okay, uh, scratch anything I was about to talk about. That was a lot of B100s. That's three 100s, a 50B, a Batch Hat, and two Tier 9 Bats. Apex, a 113, two well, 50Bs, a Kronwagen, two Batch Hats, and a Udis. So opting for the Tier 8 Udis as well. And we're going to see him do the exact same boost that we just saw Dark God Zim do the round before. Okay. I always want to catch this. Early part of the battle. Oh, but wait. Actually, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is happening over there with Ox Math? It's moving right up towards the middle, and I think there might be a square off against Vetro in the 50B. Here's hoping. But no, fast cap is what it's going to be. T1 Diabetic taking the first bit of damage on cap. That's going to pressure Eclip, uh, Apex to respond. So what's Apex's proper response to this scenario? Well, what's going to happen is they're going to come towards the north. They know that Yudas can get some resets. 
But here's what's coming on. The E100s, this hit squad for Eclipse, they're rolling straight up the 5-6 line, and they're hoping to catch tanks out. Uh, they're forcing a rotation is what you're saying. Yeah, they're going to force a rotation, try and catch out tanks, and just, I guess... And now the bat shots are coming off cap, going straight south, and they're going to swing around south of that 2 cap and try to go for a sweeping motion and to catch the tanks doing the rotation because the common rotation on this map for a north cap is sending tanks down around south and trying to open up that 8-9 line. This is a direct counter to that. And is this... I don't know. This This could get really aggressive. I've seen Apex Dodo and, we'll... and Impact are often isolated essentially and if Dark God Zim and T1 Diabetic find it, they could get the isolation on these two. It's just where are these E100s hunting for something? I don't know if they have the focus yet. Shots fired. Oh, that's Canadian Impact. that's a 2 on Impact. one on Canadian Impact. T1's just going to go in and clean them up. That should be a kill. There it is. But now Dodo has three shots. He could come in here, but Dark God Zim is alive as well. Dodo's going to peek out. T1 Diabetic sees him. But now Vetro's coming at full speed. T1 Diabetic actually blocks him. So now Vetro doesn't have any momentum. And in the middle of the map, the heavy tanks are scoring off. Exo down. Photo finish. No click. Well, they're on reload. And Ox Mathis is right behind their position. Apex has responded to the situation appropriately. We could both probably agree on that one, right? It's just like... Eclipse went forward. Apex have just a second to respond to this. They have to put the pressure on these E100s now, or this is over. That's why they're grouping up. The Batchets are going to come in behind. They're going to open up too many angles. They do catch No Nick out, so they are trying to get some shots. Now Photo's going to come in here and simp for him, take some damage himself. Yep, spread the hit points. Got to do that. They focus out external in that 50B. Great focus fire. Shots going into Brett from the Batchets. Oh, it's a bounce Brett did not want right there. He needed a track shot in order to keep those E100s around. So two extra guns alive for Eclipse at this point. HP's, I want to say, almost even 500 between the two teams, and that's the difference right there. Another 700 into Nit. However, we have to point out the fact that Apex is sitting on far less guns on the battlefield right now, and that could really come back to bite them. And Ox has a dead driver, so he's going to really struggle to get around this map, which, which really depends on quick rotations getting around, and that Kronwagen is not the most mobile tank to start with. Exactly. Now, looks like some spotting. T1 Diabetic is lit. Nice shot to him. Looks like Wallhacks on the UDES is able to assist from all the way up in the northwest. But he goes down, and now it's four against two. Brett's in a 50B. That's a dangerous tank, but I don't think he has the reload to compete against. And yeah, now Nodix isolated. However, Tigers does find the kill on the Nits. Brett, the only one left alive for Apex. I think that's, that's going to call it right there. Battle number one went in favor of that's... Apex, but battle number two is going in favor of Eclipse, and that's something that we're definitely going to have to take note of because Eclipse was not expected to win on Ghost Town. Now, twice was supposed to go in favor of Apex. I think, it, it, think it's something to note, the fact that Eclipse was able to win, I think, in a competent manner against Apex. I wouldn't say it's a blowout. I wouldn't say it's close. I'd say it's somewhere in the that in-between area. What I really liked is this was a well-thought-out set play from Eclipse. You could clearly tell that the idea was developed ahead of time. They brought a lineup that could do it, and Apex just really didn't seem to catch on until it was too late. And it didn't even seem like it was going to work at some points, too. Is yep. uh, I just want to tack that on. Well, and the, th it, the reason why that worked comes down to those three E100s. That's 2,700 HP between the three of them, so they were able to absorb clip after clip from those 50Bs and slow down the battle just enough for those batch and 50Bs to get on that flank come around south, clean out Dodoma and Canadian Impact. And, and that's getting those two batch hats down is essentially what won that game for Eclipse. Yeah, let's uh, take a few look at some of the clips from that battle. Go over those for me and those these points. about Right here, we're looking at the heavy fight in the middle. Break down your, your thoughts on stuff that maybe we missed a little bit. Well, here. the E100s are sitting here just stalling out. They're, look at this. They have all these heavy tanks distracted. And if you look at the minimap down south, the bat chat, that's the Doma left alive, 3v1 at this point after they took down Canadian Impact. And so the E100s don't have to win that fight. They don't have to win that brawl. They just have to stay alive long enough for the Batchats to win that 3v1 down south against the Doma. And from that point on, the guns were in favor of Eclipse. The HP was in favor of Eclipse ever so slightly till the end. But they did enough to pull that off. So the E100s are there to hold. Hit points, armor. They're, they're an anchor. Exactly. Essentially a hammer and, hammer and anvil strap. Ah, see, that's a great way to put it. Uh, I think uh, it's Wolf and Crow in another... That's... That's, I'll take your word for it. That's a bit of a throwback. Look Sorry. at the damage here. God Emperor Brett, 3,700, one kill, 60 fantasy points. No Nick, no skill. 3,500 damage and two kills in any 100. Good for 66 fantasy points. And Vetro, down at the bottom, having a strong comeback despite his earlier uh, game not going so well. Puts up 63 fantasy points there. Not bad. Looking down at the second page, Exo in that E100. He did his job despite not having any damage. He had to just eat a lot of shots from Apex. He had to slow them down. They I'll actually uh, take Apex a look at the post game and see how much he did absorb. So Exo was able to 
Actually, I'm sorry, Rox. He blocked about 390 with armor. Well, but he also, it took eight shots to kill him. That's two full clips from a 50B that they had to fire. And you have to remember, 50Bs rely on burst damage. So when they have to sit there for another 28 seconds to get into their second clip, that's time that Apex wasted. They didn't weren't killing the other E100s. And, and that was just the amount of time that Eclipse needed to win that battle. All right. Well, we're about to get into battle number three. That's going to be happening over on Ruinberg. So go ahead, check this out. The tank lineups. So, Mouse, Mouse, three Batchats, TVP, and an RU. How do you think this squares up against the lineup that we're seeing out of Apex? Three 113s, 250Bs, a Batchat, and an RU 251. Eclipse, if this was the next patch where the Mouse and all the German heavy tanks are getting buffs of, of a variety of sort, I, I would feel a lot better about this. But the Mouse in its current form, um, the only thing it really brings at this point is the 3000 HP. Look at this monstrosity. And I, I have to say, I, a, a talented mouse player will be able to use his armor appropriately. If anybody's able to, photo finish is that man. He knows how to play his heavy tanks. So of anybody, should be him who's able to make something of this. Dark on Tim in the North will go down. And the opening scout run. Rest in, uh, rest in many, many little Ox pieces. getting the early eyes and external inits were cutting across the field. The second that RU got lit, those two heavy tanks just stopped, looked at the cross, got the early pick. Do you think they intended to send the scout out quite so early, or was yes. Dark God maybe on a big bit of a jump that was... No, I think, th I think that was trying to be aggressive, trying to catch Apex off, and trying to get a lead in. Because what happens often in the north is teams just have to blind fire the bushes until they make the push. Okay. If Actually, you can sneak that RU across, what happens is he can get the lights on those tanks, and then they don't have to blind fire anymore. They have the lights, and they can get those shots. All right, Brox, I want you to talk to me about the mouse play, because you're the heavy tank driver here. I'm the medium. As far as a mouse goes, it's so slow, I can't figure out what I'm doing because I, I don't feel like time's moving, right? But you, you understand the intricacies of how to angle your tank and your armor and such. So break down some of this mouse play for me. I want to know why these guys are playing well or, or what's go working, what's not working right well, now. Well, what's not working is the strat for Eclipse right now because it's a 2v2 and, and this is a situation where the mouse doesn't excel when they're going up versus 113s with high DPM and heat shells. Heat shells are perfect for flat armor. Flat they armor mostly mouse. found on mouses and other German tanks. And look at just how much HP they're bleeding. They have 3,000 HP but these two 113s are now three 113s because Ox Mathis is going to get in the fight from downtown. Uh, they're just chewing away at them. There's no and support fire. You do not want the mouses, especially this early, to be the main ones getting shot. If you do, you better be trading out somewhere else, and at this point, Apex not able to get any damage off. Yeah, and Eclipse, though, tries their bat chats in the east, and Tigers loses almost all of his hit points trying to just take the position. And so, yes, those mouse are getting messed up right now, but Eclipse did not have that much success with their mediums elsewhere on the map. And that, that's oh. what this relies upon. This is yes. bringing two mouses to say, look, they're going to absorb damage. We're going to put them right up the middle road. We're not even going to try to hide them. The problem is, is the timing was off. They pushed them in too early. The Batchats weren't in position. They didn't trade out anything on the zero line, essentially. It didn't force uh, uh, Apex to allocate their resources in any manner that they benefited struggled. Eclipse. They, they were set up to deal with it. They were yeah. set up. They had these two 113s set up just to counter out the, the middle road here. And they had all their 50Bs and, one, and the rest of the tanks sitting over on the zero line ready to just be ready for any sort of rotation and so that there was there was no overmatch or anything engineered for eclipse and that's what you have to do on a rendering attack oh have to find dodo's gonna go down nice shots from no click no skill he has moved all the way down sorry to interrupt you rocks no go for but, it but uh k zero he actually hopped off of that uh, initial i'd say uh unsuccessful bat chat push in the southeast and after pulling back he actually managed to get into a solid position some spotting i'm guessing was able to find where Dodo was, and he was taken down in the backfield, no less. Yep. And what I will say, though, is if you have either nits or external on your fantasy team, very few people do, but if you do, that was a lot of fantasy points that they just got. That was almost almost 6,000 HP in mouses that they just got. Really close. Oh, and I think external external's in a dangerous place right now. He's out in the open, and his 113 Vetro's found him, and Vetro is not spotted. Is Vetro's in a really awkward spot. Those 50 Bs, if they can turn from the zero line, they could get shots onto him. That they could, but they're not able to spot him is the important part. And then Vetro's going to play it safe. So I think you and him both figured it out pretty quick. Maybe sitting out in the open above, above the north cap, an important place that Apex probably pays attention to. Maybe not the Not where you want to be. So smart play, dropping out, but no click is coming to back him up. And so that, that makes sense. He was waiting for his battle buddy. Doesn't want to get himself caught out in a bad position without that. 
Now he is spotted this time on the cross. And I think he might regret not leaving earlier because he had just about a free pass to get across the open. And now he's probably going to be going down. Yes. Brett from the zero line picks it up. There he goes. So with that, where did no click go? Oh, no click didn't even just, uh, he, he just he has a dead to commander too. Oh, that hurts a lot. It he's clicks. not going to know if he's spotted in the bat yet. Yeah. Now, another thing to look at here, guys, is we're on Ruinberg right now. Ruinberg is the, has the second highest defensive win rate of any map in the league. So much to the point we don't, we tend to call this a one and one map, a map where the defense normally wins. So this is Apex winning on defense. And this isn't the surprising. North, no click is going to go down. Sorry. Now, it is Apex running a very, a little, I don't want to say standard uh, Apex uh, defense, but Wally has his own little twist into it. And they, uh, it's it's a, a very mainstream. There's nothing crazy out there, but just a few little twists, making it making sure he has all the angles covered. And at no point did Eclipse ever look like they were going to get into this fight. He just had every an answer for every single thing they threw at him. Yeah, this is solid tanks. That's all it is. It's just solid, tight, well organized world of tanks. Right. This now. is a Ruinberg defense. How a Ruinberg defense should be played. Yep. And that attack from Eclipse not going to work this time. Apex putting another point on the board. So. So far this match, we've seen one map that I wasn't expecting to go the way it did. I think, though, that we've, we're seeing an Eclipse and an Apex here today, which are just about near the top of their game, if not just on point, right? It seems like no one's making any real mistakes. I'm thinking every action seems to be deliberate. I'm not seeing an enormous number of bounced shells that shouldn't be a number of shells penning. I, where I, player, you, players are playing right. There's I, no mistake so far. It's just about the strats, right? Yeah, I, I will say I do like the, some of the stuff that Eclipse are going for, especially on the RU. You asked me earlier, hmm. was that just Dark God Zim YOLOing essentially, or was that design? Yeah, well, and, and I really think that was designed. I think that was meant to get that RU out into that village early and just get him tucked in there. Even if he takes a few hits, as long as he stays alive, the TVP, the Batch at sitting behind him, they can actually have lights on those tanks that are sitting there in those buildings and actually actually get some damage off. And the reward is there. Without the risk of sending out the early RU, you're probably not even going to be able to get him across later. Let's take a look at some replays from that battle, actually, and, and follow some of this. This is Dark God Zim going out in the open. Unfortunately, he gets taken down really early. The mice. This is something that we definitely hung up on for a minute and we're skeptical of. Because I agree, using the hit points to your advantage could have paid off, and it did in some ways. Now, now if you think the strat all the way through, well, let's say that Dark God Zim does get into the north. Then those guns sitting in the north, they can start shooting at that 113 of Ox Mathis sitting at A6. He has to then take cover. He has to give up eyes on that north route. Then those mediums can come in. While those heavies are focused down on those masses, those bat chats can sneak right into that A6 village. They can get shots onto those 113s in the middle. And at that point, maybe that strat comes together. Maybe. Yeah. Well, taking a look, you guys just saw those post-game stats. I think I saw 4K damage. Yeah, 4,200 from external and one kill. Canadian Impact 3,100 for Apex. Top That's rare. Top damage dealer is No Nick, No Skill uh, for the second round tonight. Doing doing a decent job. Not bad. No Nick's someone who puts up solid damage, solid points, but hasn't been a front runner yet this season. So maybe tonight's his night. Yep, he, has, he also hasn't started every match. Uh, he's been sharing time with Master Pupil also as, as well. So uh, definitely no. something to keep an eye on. All right, well, as we get ready... This is time for battle number four, last time on Ruinberg. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tank lineups. So, 50 Bs, 250 Bs, an FV215B, IS4, Bat Chat. And S tank, a CRV103B. Yeah, and, and then Dark God Zim and the WZ132. I know, uh, I'll get back to that one yeah, in just yeah, one we'll, second. Put, put a pin in that one. Apex is coming in with two mouses, three Bat Chats, and two Tier 9 Bats. Now, just like we were talking to me about the mouses last game, you are well known as a light tank player and a yep. lover of light tanks. Oh, yes. You've also voiced to me your opinion that the 132 is not a good light tank. Let's go through it. Okay. 132 is, well, to start out on the, on the statement of whether or not it's a good or bad tank, as Dark God Zim is going to be the one exampling, I think it is an okay light. I do not think it is the most appropriate for this league and this current format. Now... I can be wrong, and I can accept that there are people with different play styles and all of that. So moving right past that part and getting into the critical, uh, my critical thoughts about it, I think the 132 does not have a gun which performs well enough. The 100 millimeter on it, while it while you can get decent penetration, does not perform as well as I would like against the tanks that I expect to engage against in a 132. In a 132, 
or in a 1390 or any tier 8 light, I need to know that I'm going to go up against a tier 10 and I'm going to be able to take him on reasonably. I do not like a tank, a gun that fires with a long reload because I need to be able to deal with the opponent's tracks. A WZ-132 mounting the 100mm cannon fires a little bit slow. Doesn't it have an 85 that it can also mount? It can mount the 85. Now the 85 is a little bit uh, uh, underwhelming. And so I find the T-54 lightweight to be more comfortable fit for myself. Now, um, this as is well risky. as 1390. But let's, yes, let's move straight along past that mouse point. And actually, let's move to the mouse, which are, as opposed to the last battle, this time Apex is sending theirs along the south. And they're going to be sending theirs across towards Cap. So what's up with this? Is this, this is a, this is a lot of the same concept we saw last battle. Vetro actually picks up the kill onto Nitz. And Apex is just bleeding on HP right now. Look at this, and now Death Tank's actually closing the zero line, trying to head south. Alright, and this is, of course, as you guys just saw brought up there on the lower third, this is the opponent that takes it to Apex. Eclipse played the closest match with Apex earlier this season. That was a 5-3. to three. So, of any team today that can beat Apex and unseat the Kings, as it were, it's going to be Eclipse. Well, and it looks like they're about to get a second uh, point this game. Because they're already up by about four and a half thousand HP. Yeah, and that's because of the mouse, of course. So don't be misled by just that. Well, that's that. Apex. But look at this. That's Apex starting off with more HP than Eclipse, and they've already almost doubled their lead. Yes. That. that sorry. That was. That was maybe what I was getting at. But uh, that shot from T1 Diabetic. Yeah, this S tank working this ridge here extremely hard to kill. And the other thing to remember is. These mouses are only firing 128s. So I don't believe they actually have a high enough caliber gun to just straight up pen the STRV they 103 can, without hitting the weak spot. They have to hit the weak spot, to my knowledge. From when because it has playing. that heat shell, which the, the tier nine on the tank. If if you can get into the 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 what is it? If you can fire below onto the splash plate, you can sometimes pen. But it really depends on the S tank's positioning, you know? Yep, and look at the positioning we're seeing right now out of T1 Diabetic. And just tank after tank after tank dropping. Apex just not able to pull this straight off. And once again, we said... Uh, one and one winning, map. A one and one map. Winning on defense is expected. And both teams, well, they had a different twist to it. They both ran them very, very well. Um, the, now, the offenses were definitely... I don't want to say interesting, but <laughs> creative. Let's go with that. Oh, there we go. See, uh, we're using our vocabulary. Synonyms. It, it, I, I always rag on rocks for using the word interesting. It's okay. Just bear with fascinating, it. Fascinating, interesting, creative. Yeah. A lot of different words you can use but there. But you use mice on attack to try and create that distraction. For this, In this case, it didn't feel like Apex was able to follow up the mouse. It didn't feel like the engagement that was supposed to hit hard after the mouse show up happened. It felt like... Everyone just kind of showed up, and there was some kind of firing line. Would that be accurate? Because well, I didn't it, see, I didn't see that kind of activity from the it, bat chats that you usually are waiting to see, right? It send the mouse to the middle, bring the bat chats around to one of the flanks, right? Yep, exactly. And the thing is with the mouse is, you don't care if there's a firing line in front of you. The whole yeah. reason of bringing the mice is so you can kind of have a tank that can just drive through a firing line and hope that they're still alive when they get up against their opponent next to them, and that creates the space at that point for the bat chats and the other tanks to get around to open up the different angles and then do the damage. Uh, okay, now let's take a look then at Brox at the post-battle stats for this one. So damage-wise, and we're going to look at that in just a moment here, 3,215 from the IS-4. And then where's the S-Tank? I'm surprised. T1 I thought would be much higher on this with damage. Because he was in the north, he, his gun wasn't in position to do a lot of damage. He got a few shots onto the mice early on. And then he got a few more later in the game, but he was really missing for a large portion of that fight. But look at Vetro down there, doing 75 fantasy points. Not bad. And then look at the second page. Nitz getting focused out in that batch out was the first one to go down. And then both the mice for Apex. Neither of them, including Ox Mathis, who's one of the top players in our fantasy league, not really able to get into that fight at all. Yeah, I the mouse didn't get a chance really there to do what they needed to do. They were in a low ground. They were in a defilade. Their opponents were on higher ground which is a huge disadvantage for a mouse. So they weren't in a position they wanted to be. I don't think they ended up quite getting where they needed to be. And without the support from the rest of the team, that was Nitz being taken out so early, you lose a lot of that attacking power when you lose a bat chat. So the mouse didn't have the support and the follow-up they, they needed. And that's why Eclipse just kind of fell apart. Well, let's see if Apex can keep it together when we go into our third match of the series.
Cliff, the most dynamic map in the league. Battles on Cliff always turn into desperate double-edged fights. Teams start from the same spots as they do in standard battles. The first base is located near the defender's spawn point, and the second is at the bottom of the hill. Sometimes teams split their forces and send several tanks through the 1-2 line to the left of the small hill, but usually both teams play at the center. The attacking team can send one of the tanks up to the lighthouse or behind it. Fast and quick-firing vehicles are better suited for this map, mainly medium tanks, including tanks equipped with auto all right, Rox, it's two and two, Eclipse versus Apex, and look at the lineups. All right, so I got a fun fact for you right now. Apex running six bad jets and an M4043. This lineup across the whole league yes. has a 75% win rate on the season. What about that the other very side? lineup? The other lineup comes through with six bad jets and a UDES. Tank Destroyer. Any other tank but the artillery with the six medium tanks yeah. on this season only has a 30% win rate. So we'll have to see if that stands up here today because Eclipse is on defense. They're the ones that I guess are not favored in this strat. And Wall Hacks, based on some of the earlier replays oh, I've seen from him. Oh, look at this. Oh, photo We finish. could see a head-to-head -head super no. early. Oh, no, they're going to go for the climb on the backside, I think. No, 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 no. No, they're setting no. an ambush. Oh, no. They're setting an ambush, and uh, Apex are driving right into it. But who knows what? Who's countering who? Well, this is a strat that Apex have run a lot recently. Oh, no. Tigers of Vetero are spotted first. External spotted, then Canadian. Nids yeah, but they're going to come up. They're going to get Canadian Impact out for free. Almost. Shots going out. He goes down. And now Nids, External, or and Zoma are all stuck in the low ground. External's taking a lot of shots. Just back and forth. The artillery can't even shoot over here, really. Dodoma I, taking a lot of damage. I think T1 might take a shell in a moment. Well, he's fine with that. He picked up the kill onto External, taking a lot of shots from these French auto loaders. One more shell onto D T1. He will go down. Oh, Ox is not able to sink that shell. And so T1's going to be safe for a moment. Look at Wallhax's reload. I'm watching him right now just out of the corner of the screen. But how many... Does he have an angle on this? He has I, to arc it over the hill right there. I'm going to find out the and hard they're way. And they're going to leave. They're going to leave. Oh. In just in about five seconds, he should have a shell onto the low ground. So you're oh, going to see a follow-up from Apex. They're going to need to keep tanks spotted. He's trying to go for the blind. No, no, no. He should, he should be able to get the spotting. There should be that spotting that he's looking for. T1 Diabetic is out in the open. Wallhax trying to figure out which target he wants to go for. He's going to go for no click. Shot fired? No? No, he's oh, not going to click on no click. He knows the T1's in the low ground. Oh, this is a risky shot, too. If it just goes over, it'll hit water. But he's going to zero it. Shot's out. Got Touchdown. It. And there it is. T1's out. So, right now, 6,000 hit points on the side of Eclipse. Advantage right there. But Apex with the it's artillery. Five, it's 5-5 five to five in terms of guns, but they have an artillery left alive. Well... Eclipse have the Udis. Yes, but that artillery. But his... finish picked up Brett out of nowhere. Yep. Well, they got the high ground. Eclipse has the high ground right now, so they're going to be able to slow this one down. But that doesn't necessarily work in their favor with Wallhacks and Artie. The point I want to push for that is artillery can deal significant damage, and they can turn this battle around, especially with French tanks. So Eclipse has to be careful, because if Wallhacks is able to just land one crucial shell, that could be it. Especially with Vetro showing up at a, cru at a perfect time. Oh, if he just stops right here, I think Wallhacks is just Dreaming. He's about to put a shell out. Shell out. And that's it. Just chunks down Vetro. And all of a sudden, you saw a battle turn in, turn from what should have been Eclipse. I think that just that one connection. Photo on finish is, on, is full HP. He's coming in right now. He's just going to eat the shells. He's just going to go clip out Ox. Come down. He actually almost tracks himself. Vetro picks up the kill on the Doma. And Photo picks up Ox Mathis. And now it's essentially just a 2v1 against Nitz. Wallhax is going to go down to the Udis momentarily. Playing Ring Around the Rosie down in the south. Photo picks up Nitz, and now it's all down to Wallhacks and this artillery. And the ram kill. Udes is able to get it. And that's going to be it. Eclipse taking the lead, Rockstar. Taking the lead in a match that we said was going to go 5-3, maybe 5-4, but is expected to go towards Eclipse. Strong start. This, this whole series, this whole series on yeah. Ghost Town and now on Cliff especially. Nuremberg put that one aside, but look, the other two. This is Eclipse doing their homework and just great counter strats. What does the Apex normally do? What are their tendencies? Yeah. And then they just set up. They say, all right, we're going to go do this. We're going to counter it out. Now, part of that also has to, have to come down. Why aren't Apex changing it up? Now you have to think about it. They're sitting in first place. They're up on points by, I think, nine points over the next best. At this point, why, why show anything else? Why not run what they've been running, what's been winning, and save their other creative strats for, say, oh, I don't know, the live finals? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you don't have a chance to because you need to be eclipsed. Or maybe you're holding onto your strats, yes, because you know I lose here today. We're fine. I'm fine. I'm a, I'm Apex. My lead is so 
absolutely massive that I really just don't care about giving away my secrets. But here's another thing to remember. But are those worth it? Are those secrets worth it? it? Here's something to look at, though. Yeah. Apex have not lost a game, not even in overtime yet this season. They are undefeated. Have they even gone to overtime this season? No, they have not. They haven't gone to overtime at all. Have they even done a, they've done the closest, a single 5-3 against Eclipse? The, the closest match was, yes, that 5-3 against Eclipse. That was the closest. The next closest anyone has gotten is 5-2. Yeah. And so with that, like, post-game stats, Apex, though, on top with damage. Ox Mathis and Nix. Look at that. Then behind them, Photo, Exo, No Click, Vetro, T1. Yes, those five guys in a row. But Apex, for a moment there, had it in their hands. And it all just fell apart. Well, that's I, so strange. I, to Eclipse me. were in such a great position early on. They, they set up exactly for that strat out of Apex. Apex didn't have any intel. They didn't know where any of the guns from Eclipse were. They yeah. drove straight into it, and the angles that. Eclipse held. They had a couple tanks up by the hill looking across. Then they had the two drive up to the rock. They focused out Canadian Impact. And from that point on, those three batch hats left in the low ground, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. And so we're getting ready right now for battle number six. This is going to be the final time that we'll see these teams face off on Cliff for the series, potentially, unless it goes to a tiebreaker. See, that's the deal. This one, this next battle here on Cliff is important have to pay attention because these strats are telling of how this series could go down in just a minute or two. Also pay attention to the speed at which the defend the attacker can win. We've had attackers win on one, two, two battles so far. If Eclipse wins here and drops the next two on Murrow, if they can do that quickly, this is huge for them because of all maps that you can win quickly, Cliff is one of those. Eclipse come in with four bad jets a TVP and a Udis. Five batches, excuse me. Apex come in with five batchets, a TVP, and a T49. Yep. And now the opening moves from Eclipse. We've got a West Side story with TVP, Udis staying down below. T1 Diabetic and Exo, I don't think they realize it, but surprise party. Dodoma and Canadian Impact are already up top. And a bounce shell into T1. That could have been And a the heat shell from Wallhacks goes into that oh. T49 or into the Batchat turret for 700. But now Wallhacks is going to get focused out. But it doesn't matter because that was what he needed to do. But look at this. Ape Eclipse, they're everywhere right now. They're demolishing Apex. No way. Look at this. This battle's over before it started. They... We're not even a minute in. Oh, this is some deja vu for me. I've been in this scenario. You just run straight into your opponent. You're just hoping for it. But, oh no, Apex. This I, game is already over. They, they, this why did over. they go forward like this? This is, why? Why did they, they, they had the crossfire, they had the damage, and all of a sudden, just, gone. And all in a, all these all batch hats a, reloading right now. Apex trying to catch out Eclipse, go for the aggression on defense, something we really haven't seen much this season. Vetro is going to come off reload first, but Brett is going to go over. Oh, he's squirrely. Oh, he's a squirrely little batchet, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's, he decides to throw himself out of an angle. And Vetra's is going to come in here and just farm the fantasy points. But no Nick, no skill actually picks him up from downtown, and that's going to be a 4-2 to two lead for Eclipse out of nowhere. I don't understand. Rockstar, explain to me how, why. I don't understand what the decision to go forward was about. That's, that's it's, what's it's confusing. It's aggression. It's surprise. Yeah. It's... But... It is going with your gut. It's going, look, every team on Cliff so far this season, they play slow. They play tanks up at a six. They sit back. They hold their crossfires. This is Apex saying, look, we're going to try to catch them off guard. Cliff's probably going to think we're going to do something defensive. We're going to take positions on the hill. We're going to play slow. And they just went for it. How often have we seen the defense go aggressive on Cliff this season? In the past, loads. This yeah. season, almost never. This is a good point. So they were expecting something, and it completely flopped on them. Do you think they're overthinking they, well, it, maybe? They, you think that was overthinking? I think what they were expecting is I think they were expecting Eclipse to expect that Eclipse were, or that Apex were going to. Oh no! Back. Oh no! If you want to play if, it this way, if I know that they know, so they're going to do this, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to counter with this, but they'll counter with this because they think I'm not going to go with that, and then you stack it up, and all of a sudden you have a strategy that might not really make sense once you tear it back, because you need a strategy at the end of the day, always works, and that's what I've expected from Apex, right? No matter what strategy they bring, unless you bring the exact counter, it's going to probably go exactly how you expect it, right? Well, then so, looking at this, though, this is where it all comes together for Eclipse. Look at the positioning here. They're just coming across the top, and all these tanks have the crossfire. They have the TVP and Udis in the backfield. Vetro's already up here. It's just a shooting gallery, and the thing to remember is those Batchets are in the low ground. 
Bachelet armors, Bachelets don't have turret armor. Uh, yeah, but where I think this really went wrong is going past the position you saw Canadian Impact just a second ago, getting into the low ground, getting into the shadow of the mountain. But by that point, that was already over. It was the first peek onto all those tanks, into Vetro, and into those Bachelets in the low ground. Look at Vetro here. 2,700 no kills, 57 fantasy points. And then just nothing but Eclipse players up on top. Apex right now has called a timeout, so they are slowing it down. Uh, at this point, for Apex to get the win, it would have to be a win in overtime. Now, Eclipse have two rounds, two separate rounds on Muravanka, including the defense, which has the highest defensive win rate of any map in the league across all the teams. The Eclipse get that right now. They get to sit. They get to sit back. They get to defend. And if I recall, they defend first on Muro. Correct. That is absolutely correct. So both of these teams sitting here now, it's match point. Eclipse holds this. It's over. And instead of it being the 5-3, 5-2 we were predicting at the beginning of this broadcast and before the broadcast, we're going to look like chumps need our words because it's going to turn around. And that's going to be a 5-2. That's, that's, that's painful now, for Apex, man. While, while Eclipse can't necessarily catch Apex in the overall standings, this is something to remember. Once Dare play Apex, that's also going to be another one where we expect Apex to win. If Apex beat Dare... That's doing Eclipse's job for them, essentially. Exactly. That, that's securing the second place for them. Yeah, because Dare tonight plays after this match. And the thing is, Eclipse is expected to lose this match, meaning three points go to Apex, zero points go to Eclipse. And Eclipse currently tied with Dare. Dare wins tonight against top tier as they're expected. They get three points. They solidify their second place position. If they do that, Eclipse, a team which deserves second normally, is going to start falling into third. And once you're behind like that, it's a little bit tricky to catch up. Am I right? Yeah, well, they started off this season all the way down in almost sixth place, I believe it was, at one exactly. point. Exactly, and they qu quickly got themselves back together. They brought Tigers back in the lineup, and it's doing really well for them. Well, let's go ahead and head into what should be our fourth and final map of the series. Muravanka, a map with a great number of buildings, bushes and trees, amongst which teams hide for most of the battle. The attacking team begins the battle from the top of the village, and the defenders start from the bottom of the map. Both bases are better controlled from the hill near the first base, and from the green in the lower left corner of the map. There are many attack directions. The attacking team often attempts to gain the attention of defenders by putting pressure on the first base, whilst manoeuvring several tanks behind the second base to deliver fire into the defending's flank. Team setups are very diverse but the players often choose the fastest tanks, even for heavy setups. They could even bring SPGs. And here we go into battle number seven, Eclipse, an E5, Ford Batchets, an STRV 103B, and an RU 251. Apex, Kronwagen, four Batchets, an Emil 2, and a Batchet 25 ton AP. All right, Rox. Is this, with a lineup like that, do you want to call it already or no? It's right, well, it's going to be Eclipse actually having to attack right now. And they're just going to go for a cap fast. They have three tanks on cap already. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Dark God Zim gets caught out by these Batchets over in the forest. But those Batchets are out of position, wouldn't you say, trying to get that tank from Eclipse. So from that, the response is going to be rather delayed from Apex to defend their own map. And yes, they get the reset. That's Tigers having to back off. We're following him now. Eclipse, are they going to perhaps push forward, try and catch something out? I'm not sure what they're going to go for, but cap pressure is the most sensible option right now. But Nitz is going to be able to hold off for, for just a little while now in his Emil 2. Not able to connect onto photo finish in the, in the T110E5. All right. A lot of damage going into Eclipse. I don't think this is working. Photo finish taking a lot of damage. T1 Diabetic gets caught out in the open, takes a thousand, trying to back up into cover. I'll just barely get there. Ox finally taking some damage for Apex, but at this point, 2,500 damage in the lead of Apex. And, oh no, this, this, is, this is good for Apex. This is a solid response. Vetro's going to go down in his bat chat. After that, T1's been hurt quite a bit. And now it looks like damage is getting focused onto, looks like Nitz should be taking a lot of damage in a moment. But Canadian Impact tries to sneak up on T1, gets taken down for it. Nitz in the email one is kind of pinned, and he's not going to have a lot of options. Nodek comes in and cleans this up, and Eclipse aren't out of this yet. Not quite They both yet. have two guns down. HP's only down to 400 now, so 2,500 turns into 400. But position, what do you think of that? Position right now seems to be in the favor of Eclipse. They've got the high ground, they've got the hill control, and with that, they're on attack. They should be able to pressure the cap in a moment, wouldn't you say? But those Batchets are moving in. T1 Diabetic gets caught out. 
by these bat chats. It's it's about a wolf pack. You need to get on two sides of the S tank. If you're just fa- taking an S tank head on, it's not going to go well for you. Bring in two, someone on the flank, and he's low enough at this point, you should be able to take him down. So Apex might be going for that. Take this this round tank. rests on XO and no Nick. They need to be effective. They have the HP. They need to group up. They need to find overmatches together, and they need to win them. That is how Eclipse win this match. And actually, I want to throw a note out here. Dark God Zim's still alive. So that little scout, that little... No, Nick. Takes some damage in the south. Takes another one. Loses his gunner. Oh, that's not good. He does not want to risk that, especially since I don't think he has... No, I'm... I don't think he actually brought himself a uh, med kit. So he's actually going to be losing that that gunner for the rest of the battle. And now Doesn't he has... stop him from putting the shot into external, though. There we go. Got him for Brett. He's able to take down T1 Diabetic. Wallhacks is able to slip into the backfield at this point and should be able to take down... Dark God's in momentarily. So this is this is just a moment or two, and I think this should go in favor of Apex. They've got control back in their hands. I'm not so sure about that. Exo still has full HP. Oh no, he, he full HP bat chat's only got so much damage though, and there's 2,690. Can he really do enough damage? Well, he can clean out Dodoma in one shot, external in two, and they're the two closest. Brett in the distance there. Exo's not even actually spotted at this point, and now Exo's just going to dive into the building. He still hasn't been spotted. They don't know he's here. This is good driving, then. That's all i got to say on that He's point. closing his distance. He knows that Dodoma's over here. He knows Dodoma is a one-shot. He's found him. He's going to line the up the shot. Tries to. Doesn't doesn't get it. He holds, by the and way. Now Nick covering it from distance. Only 300 HP in favor of Apex, despite having two extra guns. Now we've got Emperor Brett and External right there. Exo takes a lot of damage. Now this is going to come down to Nonick if he can get shots in here. And this is tricky. This is all about those 1v1 tanking skills, about just being tricky enough. And with the support of Nonick, can he get it? Damage is being dealt. And Exo just needs to take one more shell, and he's done. That's it. He's out. Nonick is the only one left for Eclipse. And Apex barely squeaks this one out. Yeah, with no gunner, he doesn't have much of a chance, and he's going to go down. Apex, hold on. Apex, hold on. Just one more. However, remember, this was Eclipse on offense. This map has a 70% defensive win rate. So this has turned in to one of the most one-in-one maps, essentially, that we have in the league right now. And this is going to be Eclipse going into game number eight on defense. Every reason to win it. 75% chance, you say? 70-ish. 70-ish? It's like 71. That's some some hard math right there. 70-ish. Okay. Okay. I'm just I'm just messing with oh, you. No, no. But too late. I, I've been making Rox actually. Rox has been prepping very hard, and you guys should all be very nice to him about that because he's got piles and piles of statistics on his desk now, where he's where he's keeping track of every single team's wins, losses on every map, so he can break it down. Now, Rox, sixty-seven point seven four percent overall. There we go. Actually, that's on defense. Overall, it is. Where did that even come in? <laughs> that's actually not on the sheet. That's defensive win rate is sixty-seven percent. On, well, on on Murrow. On Murrow. Okay. So sixty seven highest exactly. of any map. Which is which surprising usually was Ruinberg, we mentioned that earlier. So Eclipse, one more. They're on defense. They should be able to win this. They've got the advantage and well, they're up in the series. Pressure's on for Apex to attack. And Apex's past attacks on Muravanka. Those, that up those I want to take a look, if you can, in a moment and tell me how those have gone in the past. Because I know you've got your stats, and I know I love making you shuffle papers. So talk to me. Apex on Muravanka, their offensive win rate, is actually sitting at 100%. However, only over three battles. Okay. So it, it's a bit shy to know how they play the map out. Yep, and look at this on the last page here. In 14th spot, Vetro, one of the highest scoring fantasy players in the league right now, another game with only 416 damage, 24 fantasy points. He's on the struggle bus. Despite Eclipse being up 4-3 to three right now over Apex. Yeah. So, right now, let's get ready, because it's about to be battle number 8. All right, Rockstar, talk to me. I see five Bat Chats, Udes, and a Kronwagen for Eclipse, but Apex. A Kronwagen, five Bat Chats, and an M4043. Uh, something we haven't seen a whole lot out of an attacking team bringing the M4043. Saw it a lot more last season. Haven't so much seen it this season. Looking at it, 
it looks like Eclipse are going to go with something pretty similar to what Apex just ran, a split defense, send some tanks over towards the forest. And my guess is we'll see this Udis come in as a passive scout in one of the more common bushes and just be really hard to find. Uh, just about spot on. Although the Udis does seem a bit large to be hiding in this bush. But it has an extremely high camo value, and actually I like this. TM Diabetic going over and knocking down every tree, just trying to play with the minds of Apex a little bit, because they, they know which trees are standing up, which ones are getting knocked over. So by knocking these trees over, he's creating more possibilities where Passive Scout could be, could be sitting. He's also a lumberjack, and he's okay. He works all night, and he tanks all day. Kronwagen, <laughs> Ox Mathis's most played tank so far this season. Batchet's just chilling out in the forest. All right. So what is Apex even going for? Uh, getting already in position, scout out the east side. This is a very similar strat to what they ran on Cliff, and the, and the Cliff strat earlier backfired on them, backfired on them because Eclipse countered them out. However, what they've been doing so far this season is they use artillery on one side of the map, in this case over day one, and then they start working clockwise to the other side of the map, in this case going down the 8-9 line, trying to open up towards the 2 cap. And what happens is as they spot tanks, say, you know, G3 or into the village, the artillery has shots into the back of them. Now, it's risky, but if you can keep your artillery alive and keep them boxed in, then you can, this artillery can do a lot of damage. Make it just difficult enough for Eclipse to do anything about it. And, and, and they don't want to pull a gun away from the fight because the second the, the artillery goes down and they know that there's a tank out of the fight all the way up at A1, they can force a fight elsewhere because they know they'll have that overmatch. It's just like a game of risk. Exactly. You can't put the. It doesn't matter if you win somewhere else on the battlefield. You just make sure that whatever they have to deploy in order to win there, you make them lose more somewhere else. Makes sense. Now, Artie is going for a lot of blind fire, so I'm going to watch him play Battleship for a bit. Um, classic game of, you know, A1, no, nothing. You know, Golf 1, Foxtrot 1, see what we can find. Now remember, this is Eclipse, 4-3 to three up right now over Apex. No one has taken a single point off of Apex all season. Eclipse are 7.5 minutes away from doing just that. And... Impressively, by the way, too. This isn't Apex making mistakes, dropping battles. This is Eclipse coming prepared, understanding their opponent, the way they think, the way they move, their strategies, and countering them out, understanding what strategy to bring. And so there's a lot of respect that I have for Eclipse tonight because they've, they've done their homework, and they're about to win. But it's up to Apex to say whether or not that's going to actually come true. Even with a win here, Apex stays on top and first. Eclipse... Well, they hold on to, or they solidify, depending on the, how matches later tonight go. They will hold on to or solidify their second place position, should they win. Now, should Eclipse lose? Should this go to tiebreaker? It's a little different story. Eclipse is going to be off points. They'll be pl giving. They'll be winning two points in a win on a tiebreaker, or one point in a loss on a tiebreaker. Which, again, depending on matches later tonight. That will mean they're in second place or third place. And it will definitely impact them later on uh, down the road. Now, another thing to look at here is if, so let's say, Eclipse do get the win here, that's going to put the pressure on to Dare to perform later in the season, especially when these two teams still have to play. Because at that point, that's going to come down to Dare needing the win to have a chance at taking that second place spot from Eclipse. Uh, already it's zeroing no in on Nonek. Shot out. It Comes lands up short, way short. Okay, he's got lucky on that. T1 one. Diabetic gets spotted. Dodo trying to put some shots out, but misses. And the bat chats for Apex Not closing. Yet. Not quite yet. Just give it one moment. I feel like it's about to happen. Dodo just checking around in the south here. All right, and that's going to be, I think that's the major push. Those bat chats moving up along the backside. We're going to see probably pressure expected towards Dark God Zim if he gets spotted. I think that's the next move we see out of Apex. And let's go ahead, listen to Apex as they are just about to cry and crack the nut that is Eclipse. Be, oh, I think he's in the return. Get ready like, for right it. Here. Yeah. And they get ready for the cross, for the cross Guys, clump. He uh, might a, be in the cross clump. Okay, we have them closed in, right? Don't get mm -hmm. caught here. We need this guy to search this area. I think he's in the cross clump. Wait, 
I don't Can think that hit. This Shoot it there again. Shoot there again. That, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. Get him. Get him. I got him. They're going to push over the next circle. Okay, I'm going to I'm clipping Hygus. Hygus. Hygus is pushing. You have to save your shots Nick, I think. Comes Exo. They're coming through mid. I have Kron's two shots. Kron's, Kron's, Kron's right here. Kron's minus one. He's minus two. Bring them in. Does this spot the Kron? Right there. So I have the team one. I have They're one all shot. coming in. They're all coming in, guys. Yeah, yeah. Exo, Exo. I'm going through teams. Careful. Fox, Fox, Fox. I'm running. I'm running. Focus on this group in the north. Focus on the north group. Fall back. No, no, I need, I need shots. Sick. Keep falling back. Okay. I have 20 seconds. We're way up. Just. Yeah, we're fine. Just don't die and you already won. Nice, nice, nice. I'm loading. Uh, 12. I'm loading. I have three. I'm red We're 22. Up. I'm loading. I am loaded. Tigers, I'm one loading. shot. What are their loads? What are their loads? Try and get tigers. Kill tigers. Yeah, okay. Okay. Vetro's shooting. shooting. Get Vetro. Vetro's shooting. Okay, I'm gonna commit onto Vetro. Vetro's minus one. one. He's minus one. Fa Photo's minus one. Okay, minus I'm two. Oh. It's fine. Ox is gonna Photo's die. Gonna... But... How do they have so three? many shots? Oh, damn it. Because he clipped. He reloaded. Unlimited ammo glitch. Alright, Photo's clipping. Photo's clipping. Kill Photo. Kill Photo. Fucking cheating. Come here, photo. All right, cap points. All right, so probably, we have oh. cliff attack probably. So that's gonna be it. That's the battle. Apex did. I, it felt like they took off the training wheels or, or removed the speed governor, as it were, and all of a sudden just completely dominated. How many? How long did it take from the point that they found the UDES to winning the battle? It felt like that was no more than maybe 45 well, seconds just, to a minute. It was just wall hacks just systematically breaking down that map. They they kept a few tanks in the north just enough to make sure nothing rotated up there because that's a very common strat is yeah. once you realize that the team it doesn't have anything in the north, you send tanks to clear it to find any little tanks hiding up there or artillery. Eclipse didn't do that. They let them have the north. But then when they let them have the north, they didn't actually take, say, the 7 or 8, 9 line. Uh, normally you have to take one or the other. Instead, Eclipse just tried to sit back and we're just a little bit too passive, and Apex made them pay for it every step of the way. Yeah, and you see how a lot of the bat chats from Eclipse weren't quite together at some crucial points in the fight where members of Eclipse were. So Eclipse knew that they were going to put the pressure on for, uh, for Eclipse. They were going to force them to respond, because if Eclipse did not, they were going to watch themselves fall even faster. They took advantage of a crucial timing, but Apex was more prepared to respond to it. And you could hear it on the comms. Everyone knew it was up. You could hear s levels of coordination happening in a way that it doesn't make sense, probably, unless you already know those terminologies. I heard Fox. That was Dodo. going. Uh, that's a callback to the old fanatic fulcrum days. Those guys are the ones who started using Fox a lot when they would call the kill. Yep. And so you see the, those players who still play, the guys who were the top back then, are still on top now. And you see the way they play, you hear it in their comps. That same discipline. Yep. Now here's something else to look at. Remember that insane cliff game we had where Eclip or where Apex tried to change it up on defense and just went for the yellow down the middle of the map? Absolutely. Well guess what? That handed Eclipse the fastest attacking victory in the series. That it did. And it looks like Eclipse has chosen to Defend, defend. on Cliff, which is a map oh. where they already won both rounds earlier in the series. Now remember, Eclipse has already accomplished so far this series what no other team this season has done. They've taken at least one point off of Apex. Yeah. No one, not a single other team in the league has done that. Yeah, at this point, it does not matter. They will be walking home from this battle with some measure of points. They will get one for a loss, two for a win. And doing this is going to seriously throw off the second, third place in our standings. Currently... Dare is tied with Eclipse. Eclipse is now going to, no matter what, get at least a point. So if Dare loses tonight, if Dare does not win tonight, Eclipse is now securing second place. Well, now here's the other thing to look at is it, one, this one point could be all that Eclipse need because Dare still have to play Apex and they still have to play Eclipse. So those are points where you'd expect them to drop. And this one point would be even if Dare lose to Apex... That's the one point that Eclipse need to be over and take that second place from them. Yeah, and and maybe this is a little bit crazy, a little bit, but there is some possibility that Apex could lose their lead. They would just have to tank really, really hard the whole rest of the season. So this could actually in some ways allow that gap between Apex and the rest of the pack to kind of close a little bit. So it looks like the battle has started. The countdown has begun. Let's get ready for Cliff. Clips doing what no one has done so far this season, 
look at the lineups. Eclipse, five, six Batchettes, and a Udis, the same lineup they brought earlier. And Apex, the same lineup they brought earlier, six Batchettes and an M4043. And this is a repeat of our battle number, what was that, number five? Where yep, battle number five. Eclipse defended last time. They caught their opponent out. They caught them out on the 9-0 line. Last time these two teams went to overtime, it was Apex that managed to pick up the win. However, that was on Prokhorovka, and that was in a best of 14 series. Long series. T1 Diabetic is spotted series. right at the beginning. He's he going actually... to get over to the rock. He will be already safe, so not really in any danger right now. Yes, but spotted out early on and has to take a, let's say, less ideal position than he was probably would have wanted, I'd say. I'm going to jump to Wallhex, find where he's looking. Because this artillery piece, if he's able to just delete a tank from Eclipse early on, that's going to be huge for Apex. If he doesn't, if he ends up not able to deal much damage at all. Oh, Tigers is spotted. Shot out might be in a moment. And it is. No damage. Lens way, way too, short. too short. Way too short. Tried to snap it off there while he wasn't fully aimed in. Didn't lead it quite enough. I think, and by the way, Wallhacks is the guy calling the battle right now. So if he's worrying about giving direction at this point, he's not going to be focused as much as, deal, as dealing damage in an artillery piece. So a note there why you might see odd behavior from Wallhacks is because he may be focusing more on something else. He may decide that the probability of getting that hit is so low that he's not really going to, to expect it to go anywhere. And, well, with Bat Chats running around... Brox, you've played a little. You play a little bit of a uh, Conk GC, don't you? Occasionally. Yeah. So you're used to Artie with a little bit of more of a hang time. Yeah, it, the shell travel time is the biggest thing, but you have to remember with the Conk GC, especially, uh, it doesn't have the largest range. So you have to kind of move up towards the battle, and then in, in turn, by moving closer to the battle, you yeah. decrease your shell travel time and make things a little bit easier to connect. Yeah. The the point, sorry, I was trying to get across with that was um, with an artillery piece, the backside of cliff, bat chats are squirrely. They're hard to hit. Generally, you're not going to expect to connect most of the time, are you? You don't need to when you're shooting at bat chats. You just need <laughs> splashes within the proximity, and you can do 800 damage. As long as you're as as you're in the same so, zip code, you're probably fine. Exactly. The, the M4043 has pretty good splash, which is why it gets used a lot, especially more over, say, the Lorraine, which is the other popular tier rate already we see. Um, the Lorraine, though, oh, its benefit is it has an increased rate of fire and a faster shell travel time. The downside is it doesn't hit as hard, and it doesn't have any splash. Yeah. And actually, uh, while we have a sec... Have you looked at a lot of the changes on the Sandbox server? Definitely some interesting things being tested there. Proposed. Now, remember remember that the Sandbox server is not by any means a final. This is something that they're looking at, this whole stun mechanic. Now, I do like the idea. Uh, however, I, I'm just not completely sold on it yet. We'll see how it turns out. It's one of those new little... It's a, it's a major change that could be coming, but implications in scenarios like this could be quite... Uh, could really change, I should say, the way a, ma a battle will play. I just thought I'd bring that one up while we're watching a lot of RD activity. As right now, there's going to be very minimal activity from the the medium tanks of both Eclipse and Apex. As you can see, it's going to be highly defensive from Eclipse. They're going to be playing the the kind of game that really generally is expected to be rather slow. This is this is the camp. You know, they're going to say, okay. You guys would normally expect us to go posture up, maybe play around. But the thing is, this is a tiebreaker, and you're Apex, and you're on attack on cliff. You know you can't mess this up. If you mess this up, you're the first place team. The pressure is on. So we're Eclipse. We're just going to sit back, and we know that's going to play with your heads. We know that's going to mess with you. And that's an important factor in all of this. Not getting too aggressive early on has left Eclipse. And burning the clock down, which is exactly what Eclipse are doing right now. Now, another little tidbit here to think about. This season... The whole rest of the league, besides Eclipse, have managed to take just three rounds off of Apex all season. That's three rounds from six teams. Eclipse this season, they have taken seven rounds themselves, single-handedly off of Apex. That's more than the whole rest of the league combined. All right. Well, Rox, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance at a listen in. We're going to take a look at Eclipse because I want to hear what they're talking about. And for just a minute, see if they've got any, anything interesting up their sleeve. Oh, they're going to push wall. Hey. Here comes the push XD. Let's <laughs> get ready, boys. I'll try and light them in center. Tigers, I'm going to get ready to go up behind. Understood. 
If they get let him going. Airplane for 85 again. Okay. So everyone hold positions, and as, as soon as we identify that push, everyone put themselves in a position where their gun's going to be useful. We're all in a good place. And then Zim has to do something where he just comes back up, maybe the two line or something. Four forty. Maybe R2. They'll probably try and take advantage of the fact that they have hell, so expect an aggressive poke there. And we got to make sure that photo, make sure you're playing pretty self safe, man. If you get lit by something aggressive, you can get very quickly shot from the hill. Mm -hmm. Photo, are you sure yeah, you, you can get by the rock, maybe? Because I don't want to see you get. I'm pretty lit by sure they can go up here. here. Yeah, yeah, they can probably I'm go pretty, here. Whichever, I don't want to see you getting lit by a hard push here, and then two tanks just snipe you from hill and kill whichever, you. Whichever angle they're coming from, I can, I can. Um, I don't have to shoot. I can just get up. They won't spot me. All right, just do it quickly. If you see that push, make sure you get safe and also looking for shots, though. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, that was Eclipse talking about their defense, preparing for what Apex is about to bring. Let's go ahead and jump into Apex's comms as it looks like their bat chats are getting into position to begin their first assault. So we secure the one, two line, A, B line. We send two tanks Can't down the D line. I'm not gonna go And then we have the guys on the hill cover, all right? Nothing? All right. I'm lit, I just got lit. So it's it's probably got underneath. underneath from that guy. It's that yeah, guy. all right. So do we want to do the one, two? We got three minutes. I should stay here if I got lit. Are we doing one two? Yes, no. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Okay, all right, Brett, zero. you and me are going one line to the two. AB, all yeah. right? Yeah. And everyone else get They're ready to, to cover. They're trying to get up the hill, one at least. I'm aiming, I'm aiming. I got lit. Me too. He's if I get shot too many times, I'm just gonna down. stop at this house. Yeah. They destroyed oh, all these houses. Those. One shot out? Two? One. A bad shot in the A5, bad shot in A5. Bad shot? Cernal, can you watch the normal way? Which way? Dodo, now we cover you as That's you fine. take the, uh, as All right. you take the Tiger's Alright, I'm going right now. Get ready to cover Dodo. I'm going right now. I'm, I'm lit already. Tigers. Get ready to cover A5, A5, A5. I'm looking A5. We have to really expedite this. No, Nick, no, Nick. They're down low, they're down low, careful. We can push top, we can push yeah, top. Yeah, push down. top, top, top. Look at Odin, right, right in the middle. Odin is right in front of me, I killed you dead. They're two Tigers? stuck down. Just take control of high. Vetro shooting me. Vetro shot Photo three died. times. Photo died. Vetro shot three. We need to counter push these guys. Yeah. Do you have kill? This, this guy shot no, three. No, 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 no. He doesn't. He doesn't. Two twenty. Two twenty. I'm loading. I'm reloading. Reloading. I got two. I can hit T one there. Ten seconds. We need to counter push this. Five seconds. Ox. I'm going nine three. line impact. I'm loading. Two. Yep. Ox, can oh, you help? He's climbing. Or... He's climbing. Fuck. You got to help something. I'm clipping here. impact. I just quit. I'm gonna go help. I direct right. I, I direct TT1. Okay, so you did 872. You did 872. You start going. Can you go? Yes, yes. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm turning around. I'm turning around. Brett, you're gonna, you and me are gonna push AD line right seconds. now, right? I'm loading. I'm going. We could take the high ground with these two guys. Come on. Six seconds. I'm good. Impact. I'm red 15. Minute 40. We, we Impact. What are you doing? Are you loading? One clip. Oh shit. Vetro's nine line. Can we kill those two down? No. Can we kill? External. Can you help me with the bottom? I'm going. This is the key right now. They need to kill external. If they kill external, they open up the rest of their map. Well, Meanwhile, T1 down. takes down Nitz, so Eclipse can still do this despite being down on HP. But here comes Brett. Brett's just trying to get on target, and he's having a little trouble. Finally gets it. There's T1's down. One minute left. Exo's up against external. You were just watching this. Now, elsewhere, Vetro. Vetro is on the back side of the hill. He's trying to play the Mountain Goat game, trying to cover his battle buddy, and he's able to get off. Just about reloaded as well. Well, you know, they can kill external. Now, Dodoma, or shot. Ox, anyways, puts one shot. External gets another one into Vetro. Exo tries to shoot, misses. Gets one. Vetro should pick up the kill. Try and turn around. His turret's Waste Wastes a shell. He wastes one shell. So right now, Vetro's on five. No, he's on four. Sorry. Excuse Vetro's my counting. Vetro's turret's jammed right now. Oh, you're right. He does have to worry about Party that. comes in. 543. Exo all that remains after Vetro goes down. Actually, Exo goes down first. Brett's going to come in here. That's Ox it. is going to pick this up. That's and it. Apex are going to walk away with a 5-4 to four victory. Clawing it back from a 4-2 to two deficit. Starts off Eclipse. Not able to pick up round 1, but round 2 on Ghost Town. They were able to pick up from Apex in a surprising win. After that, we turn it around. Ruinberg goes 1-1. One and one, And then Cliff. Into the hands of Eclipse. Easy. Now, 
Apex, Apex claws it back on Murrow. They just won three rounds back to back to back to win that match. When every single one of them counted. This is not a scenario that every team is able to come back from. This is not something that just happens every day. This is Apex. And they've managed to show us exactly why they're Look worth at it. Look this photo. Oh, this hurt. This hurt when I saw it because... That could have been the game right there. That Maybe. But I really feel like even with that, even with photo, unfortunately dropping off, just bad use of physics right there, Apex had this one. They yeah. played it tight. You could hear the energy. Artillery was able to zero and in I, on the correct target. I really hate to be photo finished right now because if you remember the listening from Eclipse... He was what, confident. What was, no, but what was Tiger saying the whole time? What was Tigers it? was saying, I don't want you getting lit. I don't want you getting lit up from two bat jets up on the hill. Tiger's exact words. So now Tigers is probably sitting here going to photo. Look, I told you. The I, exact same thing. Tigers called that. Ah, uh, you're right. He predicted that. He knew exactly what, it, what they well, were going to do. He wanted him for. out of there soon, photo. But where did he want them? Where did he want him? He wanted him to somewhere down and safe. Being up there, he got lit from the tanks in the low ground, and those guns were ready to shoot tanks right there because that A6 spot has come so common this season. Yeah, it's every every single battle. On defense, there's a tank destroyer or there's a TVP up there, right? So let's take a look. Post-battle stats, damage, definitely going in favor of Apex. Dodoma, a top performer on Apex, not even able to find damage where he, he had a to. really quiet night, as did Vetro, also only doing 1,100. Yeah, that hurts for me. I, I pick up those guys a lot on my fantasy team. And... Uh, well, I picked Brett tonight, so that worked out. But rocks, what a match, man! Yeah, That's that crazy stuff, back and forth. Um, I, I like what I saw out of Eclipse, and you have to remember, Eclipse was a team that four matches into the season didn't have any identity really. They they were lost. They didn't have Tigers calling. They they kind of seemed confused about what they wanted to do. They were trying for a system that they really weren't making work so far. Now, provided if they give a little bit more time, I think they would have come around eventually. But yes. they got to the point they lose that five one two dare. They bring Tigers back in. Tigers slips in near seamlessly. They start firing on all cylinders. Um, and remember, I've already said it. No one has even taken Apex to overtime. Eclipse now have seven round wins against Apex. The whole rest of the league has won three rounds. Three rounds against Apex the whole rest of the season. That's it. That's all they've managed. And we have the breakdown of that match here ready. First place tonight, no click, no skill. We've talked about him being one of those players that just shows up and just puts out points. 400 fantasy points tonight. That's solid. External right behind him with damage photo as well. But look at God Emperor Brett, 422.5 points. If you put him on your team, you're happy right now. Yep, Ox coming in there. 370 fantasy points. Vetro just shy of 400, so not a bad showing there either from Vetro matching No Nick. And then Dodoma, someone that's normally a very consistent fantasy player, 2,800, only doing almost 9,000 damage and four kills. Not quite able to perform so far tonight. And that a lot of that has to do with the places that Dodoma was playing and how Eclipse were running their strats and ran a lot of hard counters, and that led to Dodoma being one of the first or second takes down in a lot of these matches, especially on Cliff. Exactly. I think that's one of the biggest play things about the way Eclipse played tonight that really served them. They, they studied their opponent, and they brought strategies which did counter out the plays that you would see from Apex. You saw this a few times. This was on Ruinberg. I think we can point to that happening on Ghost Town a little bit, and definitely on one of the cliff battles. There was a hard counter that worked out. So Eclipse clearly did their homework, and at, and they understood they needed to to win this because they couldn't just roll, roll out to the battlefield and say, all right, whatever Apex throws at us, we're just going to figure it out because that's just saying I'm not going to study for the test, and then I'm going to show up at the final and just see if I remember what's going on, right? Yep. This is this is the highest level of World of Tanks in North America, yep. in the Western Hemisphere. Now, remember, first and second place in the Gold League, they get an automatic buy to the regional finals. They don't have to play in the online playoffs. Yes. They this get to just skip that. That's That saves you from the upsets. It saves you from that one match that takes you from going to the finals and all of a sudden you're out like Aquatic last season. Very important. This one, one round, this one point that Eclipse just got, just all of a sudden said, all right, Derek, do you want that second place spot? Not only do you have to now beat us to take it from us, you have to get a result versus Apex, essentially. Yes. That's two tall tasks that they have to get. And to uh, tell us a little bit about that Apex one, we actually now have an interview with Apex. Sir, is this Comps? Welcome to the show. I'm just taking a guess. Comps, welcome back, sir. That, I guess. that was closer than I expected. I need you to tell me what the heck happened there. Um, well, that was garbage play on our part. Um, a lot of guys just didn't listen. Uh, didn't do what they were told, uh, so we were, you know, 
down two matches uh, after Murrow. So, uh, well, after Cliff and then going into Murrow. Yeah, Cliff. But after we had a little timeout and uh, had a little talk with the team, and then they just, you know, got, got it together and started playing again. Yeah, because Cliff, Cliff is one I want to talk about because it looked like a Cliff's hard countered. It looked like they knew your strat already, and they went to the battlefield, said, all right, we're going to counter you on the east side. We're ready for you west side. And both times it did not go your way at all. Those were two ones that seemed really hard hitting from Eclipse. Is it obvious that they did their homework tonight? Um, I mean, on Ghost and on Runeberg, they did their homework. On Cliff, I think it was just you know us playing like you know terrible players. It was just uh, inexcusable the the way that they you know stopped and you know then pushed in and died. And I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. It was just bad play. That's really insightful. Uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to tell looking outside in whether or not something's a hard counter or whether or not it's sloppy play. Because very much Eclipse, you guys, you guys look clean all the time. There's something very coordinated and very uh, uh, trying to figure out the word, but uh, very military like. You guys are drilled. You can expect everyone to show up at the right time. There's no stragglers. And both times on Cliff, you say it was sloppy, but it, and I'm not trying to say it wasn't, but very much the strategy seemed to just kind of fall into place, where you guys would run a, run up against your opponents. They would be ready for you, and they would win. Earlier on on Ghost Town, let's talk about the second battle on Ghost Town. That was a loss for you guys. Um, do, you, do you remember what happened there? Can you give us a little recap of, of maybe how, of, of maybe why you weren't able to to finish it out on uh, defense? Uh, well, basically they uh, they went north for the cap. Uh, basically, we rot- rotated to counter that and then they just rotated around us and picked off two bats and then that was it i mean that was you know that was a good play on their part and you know they did their homework for that but you know that's just eclipse being better than us that game it wasn't us you know being bad and handing them the game fair enough fair enough uh and i guess uh what did what do you have to say about the match in general this was the big rematch this was first and second place last season all over again and Eclipse showed up and took you guys to a tiebreaker. This is the first tiebreaker. So what does this mean? What, is, what do you take? What's your takeaway from this match? Well, I mean, it shows that Eclipse is still capable. I mean, uh, for us, I mean, it just shows that we have, you know, a lot more work to do uh, so that things like this don't happen. But all in all, it shows that, you know, any team can be competitive on any given day. So I guess that's, uh, that's good for the overall picture of the league. All right. Thank you so much for coming out and uh, and having this interview with us, Comps. It was a pleasure to watch you guys play uh, Eclipse tonight. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right. We are getting ready now for 